Let us have no fear in approaching the throne of grace to receive mercy. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and the first earth has disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as the bride or trusted for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see this city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and no more mourning or sadness. The word of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole of creation new. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please respond. You are the highest honor of our grace. May you be blessed, my daughter, by God most high, beyond all women on earth, and may the Lord God be blessed, the creator of heaven and earth. You are the highest honor of our grace. The trust you have shown shall not pass from the memories of men, but shall ever remind them of the power of God. You are the highest honor of our grace. God grant you to be always held in honor and rewarded with blessings. Since you did not consider your own life when our nation was brought to its knees, you are the highest honor. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Virgin Mary, who believed that the promise made you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, 
Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary of Magdala, seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. My name is Bishop John Lavore, and I'm the bishop in the Diocese of New Ulm in Minnesota in the United States. And in case you don't know where New Ulm is, it's not too far from what's called the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis. I'm very privileged to be joined by my fellow English-speaking priests as we can celebrate this Mass. And of course, it is a special privilege to be right here in the spot where our Blessed Mother appeared to the three shepherd children. This will always be holy ground, a place where we meet God through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. I would just like to mention this morning kind of the forgotten figure of the apparitions here at Fatima. And that is the figure of St. Joseph. I'm sure that you have read about all of the marvelous apparitions here, but it was on that last day, October 13th, when the children had a special vision of Mary and Joseph and the child Jesus. There were so many here who witnessed the miracle of the sun as the sun danced in the sky and appeared to be falling from the skies, so much so that people thought it was the end of the world and were calling out their sins and calling out for God's forgiveness. But the children saw our Blessed Mother, the child Jesus, and Saint Joseph, Joseph holding the child. And Joseph and Jesus blessing the world. And that figure, that icon of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I think was very important for the time when that apparition came about, but also, and maybe even more so, is important for our day and age. Because Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are the Holy Family. And as I'm sure you know, family life today is something that is under attack by so many different forces. And so by appearing as a family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph hold up to us the importance of marriage and of family life and form a segue for us into the joyful mysteries of the rosary. As you know, the Blessed Mother here at Fatima gave her name as Our Lady of the Rosary. And those joyful mysteries are about the family life of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and how they lived that family life in union with God the Father. Each of the mysteries of, each of the joyful mysteries, of course, is joyful, but there is also a little bit of suffering 
that goes along with each of those mysteries, pointing out that family life is indeed joyful, that it is a, a great privilege, that it has been given to us by God at the very beginning when he blessed man and woman and said, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth. So it is a great gift and there is a great joy in marriage and family life, but there is also those, those times of sorrow and struggle and difficulty. And Jesus, Mary and Joseph want us to come to them for strength in living marriage and family life. You take, for example, the Annunciation. Mary said yes to being God's mother, and there was great joy in that. And it was at her yes when Jesus took on his human nature in her womb. But there was much that Mary had to go through in being the mother of the Redeemer. The visitation, you know, again, a joyful time for Mary to meet Elizabeth and to greet her but also a time of suffering because she had to travel a long way, 90 miles from Nazareth down to Ein Karim, which is just outside of Jerusalem. But she went. So joy, but yet that reminder of difficulty and sorrow. The birth of Jesus and that stable in Bethlehem again, joyful, but there's that undertone of difficulty because they couldn't find a place, a place to have their child, Jesus or Joseph and the Blessed Virgin. And then, of course, the presentation in the temple when the sword of sorrow, Simeon predicts that a sword of sorrow will pierce Mary's heart and the finding in the temple where Joseph really uh, uh, it must have been difficult for him because Jesus said, don't you realize I have to be in my father's house? Well, Joseph gave up everything to be the spouse of Mary and to raise the holy family. And here now Jesus is talking about his other father. So again, uh, the holy family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the united in love, for one another, uh, to remind us how important marriage and family life is and how it's so joyful, but there are difficulties. And Jesus, Mary, and Joseph know of those difficulties. They live them, and they know what we're going through, and they will help us. They are for the family. They are for us. And so as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist in this very spot where Mary appeared. We ask God's special blessing for marriage and family life in our day. If you would please rise. Having been formed by God's holy word, we now come to him in confident prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the needs of the church throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, for those who seek consolation and strength from Our Lady of Fatima, we pray to the Lord. For all of those who are back home, our family members, our relatives, friends, for all of those that we pray for on our pilgrimage here, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in the number of those called to be priests and religious, we pray to the Lord. For peace in our troubled world that world leaders would act for a true and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord for strong and loving families that become schools of love and faith and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
and for all of those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Let us ask our Blessed Mother's intercession for these petitions by praying together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts of reparation and of praise so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb. And in giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all men as her children, born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples and thus became the model of the suppliant church. She then finally elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church 
and lovingly directs their steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our hope, and Antonio, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind invitance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow all of the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, having received with joy these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray you, that they may lead us to eternal life, where we may rejoice forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.